between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness Your loving kindness Saw through the shadows of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ, my Lord Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. 
Hallelujah. Welcome to our Easter Sunday service. Thank you for joining with us. And we start with uh, a celebration that Jesus is risen. He is risen. Jesus is alive. <laughs> Let us pray. 
as we lift our praises to you today, we remember the victory you won on the cross, a victory over death and sin. And so we thank you, Lord, for the freedom that that brings to our life. And in this freedom, we want to live our lives dedicated to you, to love in the way you do, to walk in peace and contentment in the way you did here on earth to express the joy of a living relationship with you. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done for us. We praise and worship you today because you are almighty God. You have created wonderful things in this world for us to enjoy and delight in. Today, we thank you for the joy which comes from a knowledge of your great love for us. We come before you to express our sorrow that we have not always lived our lives in the victory that you won on the cross. Sometimes we think only of ourselves. We ask that you will forgive us for the times when we have hurt people by what we have done or said. We thank you that you are a loving God who is always willing to forgive. And so we say we are sorry for the sin in our lives and ask for your forgiveness, knowing that if you are truly sorry, you will wipe our sins away. Amen. And now shall we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now I'd like to ask Carol to read from John chapter 20, starting at verse 1. Hello everyone. The reading is taken from John chapter 20, verses 1 to 9. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Amen. Thank you, Carol. So we sing another hymn which celebrates Jesus' victory over the grave. Lo, in the grave he lay, Jesus my Saviour. Shall we sing? Yeah.
And so I would like to ask Carol again to read on from John 20, this time starting at verse 10. John chapter 20, verses 10 to 18. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me for I have not yet returned to the father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I am returning to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Amen. Thank you, Carol. And we sing our next hymn, Christ the Lord is risen today, hallelujah.
Jesus said, I tell you the truth, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains a single seed, but if it dies, it produces many seeds. Jesus was willing to die. I'm sure that if there had been any other way, Jesus would not have gone to the cross. But there was no alternative. This was a new the way that Jesus was forging. It wasn't a mend and make do. It was a complete break from the sacrificial system of the Jews. The old had to die for the new to be born. When we look at our church today, we know there needs to be death before resurrection. We are not saying knock down all the churches and start again. We are saying the seed must die. We need to be focused on Jesus and not on our churches. We need to ask the question, what needs to die in our churches? And what needs to die in us ourselves? So that people can see Jesus more clearly in us and in our churches. In the Methodist Church, we have tried to alter the structures and tried various innovations, but we are just tinkering around rather than addressing the core of the matter, which is discipleship. Jesus' death meant so much to the disciples because Jesus was their whole world. He wasn't some celebrity rabbi that they were following. He was their life. Without him, nothing mattered. And without him, their lives had no purpose. When Jesus died, the disciples hid away. They didn't know what else to do. Their hopes and dreams had disappeared. Their teacher, their mentor had died. Everything had been ripped from them. Their world had fallen apart and there was no one who could put it back together. When Jesus was there with them, he seemed to be in control. He taught them about the kingdom. He referred to God as Father. Jesus was training them for the kingdom. And suddenly it was all over. The seed had to die. All their ideas of an earthly kingdom were dashed. The disciples were empty and broken. Now God could really work in their lives. As the disciples grieved for Jesus, God was able to introduce new ideas into their hearts and minds. When Jesus appeared to them on that first Easter day, they were stunned. Their minds couldn't take it in. They were elated and yet dumbfounded at the same time. How could this be? They knew he was dead and yet he was alive. Gradually their hearts began to race as the reality sank in. But what to do with this knowledge and this new experience? Jesus appeared to them on a number of occasions before finally being taken up to heaven. It was at Pentecost that the disciples were transformed by the Holy Spirit. The seed had died. Jesus' earthly ministry was finished, but the rebirth was the Holy Spirit. The disciples were no longer dependent on Jesus being physically there with them. They now followed the lead of the Spirit. We are too are reborn into the Spirit, except that our hearts are continually drawn back to the old ways. We seem to be dependent on our buildings, our liturgy, 
and our traditions. Jesus didn't die so that we could be like the Jews and be dependent on physical things. Jesus died so that we could live by the Spirit. Because the Spirit will reveal the Father and the Son to us and allow other people to see God in us. Jesus' resurrection showed his Father's true nature of love. Love that was willing to suffer death to redeem humankind. Love that overcame death and sin. Love which brings light out of darkness. Love which transforms lives and situations. No longer do we need to be burdened by guilt because Jesus has forgiven our sins and given us a fresh start. No longer do we need to be defeated by sin because Jesus gives us the strength to overcome temptation. No longer do we need to fear death because Jesus has given us eternal life. Think of how the disciples were transformed by Jesus being raised from the dead. Peter was restored to leadership after his denial of Jesus. Thomas believed when he saw the nail prints in Jesus' hands. And when Pentecost came, the disciples couldn't help themselves as they poured onto the streets to proclaim Jesus as Lord, risen from the dead. Jesus' resurrection was a pivotal point in all of history. From his victory on the cross flowed an unstoppable tide that has reached every nation. Amen. And now we sing our next hymn, See what a morning gloriously bright with the dawning of hope in Jerusalem. Shall we sing?
Let us pray. We pray today for people who are anxious and fearful. Touch their lives in such a way that they will find real courage through faith in you. We pray for all the NHS staff, especially those on the front line. We ask for your protection on them and their families. We pray for others who supply our needs in many different ways. Lord, protect them as they go about their daily business. We pray for our police force as they try to uphold the law in difficult circumstances. We pray for those with COVID that you will bring healing and wholeness to their lives. We pray for those suffering from long COVID that you will give them strength to get well. And we pray that you will comfort those who have lost loved ones through the effects of the virus. We pray for our government that you will guide them and give them wisdom as they ease the restrictions of lockdown. We pray that you will protect our Queen and her family, that you will be with her in all she does. We pray for our nation as we come out of lockdown. We thank you for the vaccination programme that we have, but we pray that people will still be careful in how they conduct themselves. Amen. And now we sing a rousing hymn, which is Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. Shall we sing? save the blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining with us today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the rest of the weekend and keep safe, 
and God bless. Goodbye. Save us.